Hi guys, it's getting to be a lovely Monday morning here in the collapse of global industrial civilization out here in the middle of nowhere on an undisclosed spot on the planet uh, on this lovely Monday morning. Where are we? November 23rd, 2020. So I'm just going to keep this short and sweet today. I ask my name is Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles, and our daily collapse, our chronicle of the collapse, right here in the mainstream media on Yahoo News from this outfit I've read before, from before, simply called The Week. This is by a fellow, and I think I recognize this guy's name, Matthew Walter, and uh, his short, sweet essay today is titled, The Earth is Not a Math Problem. There you go. And we're going to start out uh, with a quote from none other than our esteemed Pope Francis. Pope Francis, quote, The Earth, our home, is beginning to look more and more like an immense pile of filth. Close quote. Back to, back to Matthew. That was five years ago. Many observers, not only in secular media, but in, quote, conservative Catholic circles as well, misunderstood the point of his encyclical on the subject of what he calls human ecology by insisting that its theme was climate change. And I know what Pope Francis feels like. People have mistaken this channel for a climate change channel. This is a human ecology channel. Thank you, Pope Francis, for uh, describing Collapse Chronicles. <clears throat> this meaning thinking everything to do with the environment uh, is due to climate change is what he's talking about. This is a very narrow understanding of the great crisis of our age, the dimensions of which transcend graphs in their apparently alarming upward sloping lines. The problem of human ecology that we are confronted with is the absorption of all creation into a sinuous continuum of decontextualized economic exchange. It has distinct but overlapping political, social, economical, and, I'm sorry, economic, and of course, spiritual and ecological, the number one, dimensions. Its urgency is such that the Holy Father has addressed many of his recent pronouncements, not merely to the Catholic faithful, but to all persons of goodwill throughout the world. One reason that Francis's perspective on what we are used to thinking of as, quote, the environment is so valuable is that he reminds us that this is not an abstract problem. It will not be solved by a, by a technocratic mindset. Projections for carbon tax rates that economists believe could get that chart down to zero by or ahead of a certain date. That is among its primary causes, nor can it be addressed by schemes like the Green New Deal, which are premised upon remaking everything that is wrong with consumer capitalism in the image of woke 20-something professionals. One of the most obvious problems with the managerial approach to climate change is the disdain in which many climate scientists hold policies meant to limit the use of single-use plastics. After all, they argue, 
Our calculations suggest that banning disposable bags will result in only a negligible reduction in global emissions, you know, of, of global carbon emissions. It would be far wiser, they argue, to ask the group of eight nations to sign a treaty full of meaningless verbiage and, quote, targets that can always be met by creative statisticians, the same gaming of metrics that gave rise to the problems they are hoping to address. <laughs> what these contrarians miss is the fact that waste is a bad thing for its own sake, that the disposability of so many <clears throat> Oops, my computer. That the disposability of so many of the objects that surround us disfigures not only the planet, but our own appetites and imaginations. The measurability of waste is beside the point because the Earth is not a math problem. If scientists could demonstrate tomorrow that our oceans were being made healthier by all the trash they contain and that birds were enjoying longer lifespans thanks to their, thanks to their consumption of plastic rubbish, our throwaway culture would still be disordered. This is true above all because however transient our relations with these items, most of them made by wage slaves, that we discard without a thought each day might be the consequences of their disposal will be with us for thousands of years. The future of life on this planet is billions of polyethylene diapers slowly po poisoning the soil or, more likely, toxifying the air centuries after our great buildings have crumbled. Some of us might be willing to countenance all of this so long as we imagine gigantic heaps of rubbish in places that do not exist on maps. But now we read that even the summit of Mount Everest has become a trash heap, its snows soaked with microplastics, its famous base camp, the presence of cast-off water bottles and fragments of synthetic fiber. Can you graph the Himalayas, is there a statistical threshold of waste measured against GDP that would make us okay with the idea of this sublime vista looking like the parking lot of a McDonald's, its ancient peaks the haunt of short-sighted experiments by chemical engineers chasing meaningless profits? The prospect of human extinction raised by climate scientists is a fantasy that distracts us from the real question. What sorts of human, human beings will live in an utterly spoiled world centuries or millennia after their ancestors traded beautiful mountains for ones made of Paul Patrol action figures. Thank you, Matthew Walter, for your uh, your spot-on analysis. We will send that out to Book Hermit, who I'm sure will cheer on Matthew. But uh, now that I've gotten that off my chest, a uh, hey, little dog and I. Yes. We are back. Imagine that. We are back to Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse and Peanuts Sawmill for a little more lumber, a little more planet-eating lumber to uh, continue our follies 
our human follies in the collapse of global industrial civilization, and I heartily encourage you to enjoy your human ecology follies in the collapse as well. Bye, guys.